In a recent video in the free software series, I showed you VirtualBox, which is a free and open source solution to be able to run other operating systems virtually on your PC. In this beginner's guide, I'll show you how to set up and use VirtualBox. In addition, I'll also show you how to install and run Ubuntu, which is one of the most popular of the Linux distributions. Coming up on Tech Gumbo. What is VirtualBox? You may have heard of the terms virtualization software, hypervisor, or virtual machine. Basically, what the software does is that it allows an entire operating system, which I'll refer to as the guest, to run on another operating system, which I'll refer to as the host. There are several reasons why you'd want to run a virtual machine on your computer. Some of those might include you need access to software that is not available on your host operating system. For example, being able to run Windows software on Mac or Linux, having access to multiple operating systems simultaneously, or you're just curious about trying out another operating system without the need to partition your hard drive. Whatever your reason is, let's dive right in. Navigate your way to the homepage for VirtualBox, which is virtualbox.org. Once you're there, select Download VirtualBox. Select the appropriate download package for your host operating system. My operating system is Windows, so I'll select Windows Hosts. And then save the package to your preferred download location. For me, that would be my Downloads folder. Once your download is complete, head over to the download location and double click on the file to begin the install process. Just click through the install screens. Most of these won't require that you change anything. I usually leave all of these checked. You may get this warning that VirtualBox will reset your network connection and temporarily disconnect you from the network. It will ask if you want to proceed with the installation now. Select yes. It now says that it's ready to install, so select Install. And this may take a few minutes. When it's done, select Finish. Once VirtualBox has been installed, launch it. You'll now see the welcome screen for the software. I'll make it full screen so it's easier for you to see. Before we go any further, if you haven't done so already, this would be a good time to go to the Ubuntu website which is ubuntu.com, to download the ISO file that you'll need if you plan to install it as a guest operating system. On their homepage, along the top, select Desktop. Then click on Download Ubuntu. The one you'll want to download is Ubuntu 16.04.3 LTS, which is their newest long-term support release of the operating system. So select Download. On this page, if you scroll down, you have the option to contribute to Ubuntu, or you can select, not now, take me to the download. When the prompt comes up, do not open it. Depending on which browser you're using, you'll want to save the file to your preferred location. I'll now show you how to create the guest operating system. Since this is a beginner's guide, I'll attempt to simplify the process as much as possible. In the upper left, Select New. This is where you give your guest operating system a name, and this is where you choose the type and version of the operating system you'll be installing. You can name it whatever you want. I'll keep it simple for this video and name it Ubuntu 2018. For type, we'll be installing Ubuntu, which is a Linux distro, so make sure that Linux is selected. You can install most operating systems into VirtualBox, the only one I've had difficulty with is Mac OS. The last time I had it running was a few years ago, and to make a long story short, it was not a smooth process. For version, select Ubuntu and the processor type of your host machine. Mine is 64, so I'll select Ubuntu 64-bit. Select Next. This is where you select the amount of memory that you want to allocate to your guest system. Since we're installing Linux, it's not going to be as resource intensive as Windows, so we won't need that much memory to be allocated. It's generally a good idea to never allocate more than half of the memory that you have on your host system. 
So if you have 16 gigabytes, try to avoid allocating more than eight to reduce the risk of crashing your host system. For Linux, two gigabytes, which is 2,048 megabytes, should be enough. When done, select Next. Using an existing virtual hard disk file has its advantages, but to keep this uncomplicated, make sure that Create a Virtual Hard Disk Now is selected. Then click on Create. You'll now be asked to choose the type of file that you want to use for the new virtual hard disk. In my past experience, I find that VirtualBox disk image works great. Make sure that one is selected and click on Next. On the screen, leave it on dynamically allocated so the guest operating system will not use the space on your physical hard drive until it needs it. Select Next. The screen lets you decide the file location which you shouldn't need to change. You can also select the size of the virtual hard disk to determine how much of the data from the virtual machine will be stored on your drive. Depending on what you plan to use the guest operating system for will determine the size that you select. I plan to use Ubuntu every now and then for random testing, so I'll just leave it on the default of 10 gigabytes. If you plan to use Ubuntu quite a bit, you may want to increase the size to 15 to 20 gigabytes to be on the safe side. When finished, click on Create. To see more details for your guest operating system, select Details. Depending on which guest operating system that you're installing, the information here will vary. The next step is to go into Settings, which is to the right of New. In general, you'll see the information you entered earlier. In System, you'll see the memory you previously allocated. Select the Processor tab. You may want to adjust the processor slider. Never go above half of your CPU count to avoid crashing your host system. With Ubuntu, two CPU should be fine. In Display, it's best to give your video memory as much as possible. So drag the slider all the way to the right. Also below, check Enable 3D Acceleration and Enable 2D Video Acceleration. Graphically, this will give you a smoother experience. Next, we'll jump down to Storage. This is where we will add the ISO that was downloaded earlier for Ubuntu, where it says Controller IDE. Below that, select Empty. To the right, where it says IDE Secondary Master, select the disk to the right. From the menu, select Choose Virtual Optical Disk File. Find the location where you saved the ISO file for Ubuntu. Select it, and then click on Open. Previously, where it said empty, you'll now see Ubuntu. And at the bottom, you'll notice that it says invalid settings detected. I always get this and just ignore it. Starting out, you shouldn't have to mess with any of the other settings. If you go down to the shared folders, you have the option to select a folder that can be shared between the host and guest operating system. Just go to the far right and select the icon for the folder with a plus on it. Select the drop down arrow and select Other. Then just navigate to the folder on your host operating system that you want to share with the guest operating system. I usually leave Read Only and Auto Mount unchecked. When you are done, select OK to exit settings. In Details, it looks like everything's good to go, and you'll see here for IDE Secondary Master that Ubuntu has been added. Click on Start. Once it's started up, you can minimize the virtual box program. You'll eventually arrive on the screen where you can select your language and you'll have two options, try Ubuntu or install Ubuntu. Select install Ubuntu. I'll check download updates while installing Ubuntu and install third-party software for graphics and Wi-Fi hardware, Flash, MB3, and other media. Then select Continue. The next screen will say that this computer currently has no detected operating systems. What would you like to do? Make sure that Erase Disk and Install Ubuntu is selected. And then click on Install Now. And then Continue. Choose your time zone. I'm in the New Orleans area, but Chicago is the same time zone, so I'll leave it as is. And select Continue. 
Now you can choose your keyboard layout. You may want to test that your keyboard's working, so click here where it says type here to test your keyboard and just type something. Looks like it's working. Select continue. On this screen, you'll enter your name. The computer name will be auto-filled. You'll pick a username, password, and confirm your password. You can choose to log in automatically or require a password to log in. When you're done with that, select continue. Then you'll be greeted with the screen that will welcome you to Ubuntu and install the operating system. This process can take several minutes, so instead of sitting here watching the install process, I'll meet you on the other side. When it's done installing, it will say that installation is complete and you need to restart your computer in order to use the new installation. Select Restart Now. And now it's booting up. And now the operating system is fully loaded up. Now for a few quick tips to get you started with Ubuntu. You can resize this window to your liking by selecting the sides and the corners and just drag in and out. You could select the full screen icon here at the top to have it fill your screen, but you're still left with a white bar here at the top. But if you want true full screen mode, go to view in the toolbar and select full screen mode. The shortcut keys to go into full screen mode are host plus F. And you'll probably notice that you don't have a host key on your keyboard. The right control key on your keyboard is the host key by default. So let's jump into full screen mode and tick this box to have it never show this message again. Then switch. Along the left side is the Unity launcher where you can get quick access to search your computer, files, along with other pre-installed programs like Firefox, and LibreOffice. To close a program out, go to the top bar, go to the far left, and select the red X. So I'll close out LibreOffice, Files, and now we're back to a clean desktop. If you want to avoid using the command line to install software, select Ubuntu Software. Here you can find many of the popular programs for Linux. And some of the greats are listed here, like GIMP, Blender, and Inkscape. I'll select GIMP, which is a free image editor. When you select install, it will ask for the password you entered earlier when you were installing the Ubuntu operating system. So enter in your password and select authenticate. And it will continue with the installation process and you can see the status here in the left bar. Now that GIMP is installed, you can launch it just like any other program. And that's it for my quick tips for this video. Hopefully they help you out while exploring Ubuntu. When you're ready to quit your Ubuntu session, select the settings icon in the upper right and select shut down. It will ask if you're sure, select shut down again. Then it'll close it out. Thanks for watching. Links to the websites mentioned are in the description. Give this video a thumbs up if it was useful for you. If you're new to this channel, subscribe and ring the bell notification icon for more beginner's guides and other tech-related stuff from Tech Gumbo.